What does this kettle and this lump of coal have in common? To find out, we're going to have to go to a place called Bolton. Bolton is in the northwest of England. It's not too hard to find. It's on the highway to hell. Only they don't call it a highway here. It's a motorway. Its nickname is the Devil's Road or the Devil's Causeway. But in true northern fashion, officially this stretch of the A666 is called St. Peter's Way. There's only a few things I know about Bolton. It was once the center of the universe. And now, it's the home of the Bolton Steam Museum. And the palindrome of Bolton is not lob. All throughout history, enterprising people have been trying to make work easier. Maybe more efficient is a better description. If it gets easier, it's a bonus byproduct. For millennia, work was man powered, or animal powered, muscle powered. First, you had to grow the corn, and then you would have to grind it by hand, all day, for days, and days, and days, and days. Eventually, we figured out how to harness the wind and the water. Along came the windmill and the water wheel, and all of a sudden, we had millers and the like. This is where the division of labor really got going. With machines like these, we could make more stuff than we needed. Places like Quarry Bank Mill, with its massive water wheel, had a monopoly on the cotton spinning industry. But they were tied to the land and the water that provided their power. Once we had an engine, we could power all sorts of tools. Wind and water have powered all manner of machines over the years. But like the wind and water, that engine was unreliable. No wind, too much wind, not enough water, and the machines stopped. With all those machines needing a more reliable power source, the Industrial Revolution was waiting for a spark to jump into high gear. The ancient Greeks knew about steam power. This is a hero's engine, first described around 25 BC. But they didn't know what to do with it. It was just a whimsical novelty, a curiosity, a party trick. In 1543, a Spanish scientist and sea captain came up with the idea of attaching paddles and powering a ship with one. But the idea died on the drawing board. It wasn't until 1712 that Thomas Newcomen came up with the first practical steam engine. It was used to pump water out of coal mines. With all that coal lying around, energy efficiency was not an issue. In 1763, James Watt, a Scottish inventor and mechanical engineer, was brought in to repair one of Newcomen's engines. He made major design changes and dramatically improved the efficiency of the Newcomen engine. He entered into a partnership with Matthew Bolton and the stage was set for the steam engine to power the Industrial Revolution. They are making steam. The steam engine revolutionized transportation as well. It allowed for the development of trains and steamboats, which could transport goods and people much more efficiently than before. This helped to fuel the growth of trade and commerce leading to the development of larger, more complex economies. The Industrial Revolution also led to the development of new technologies, 
such as the telegraph and the telephone, which revolutionized communication and information sharing. In addition to the technological changes, the Industrial Revolution had a profound impact on society and culture. It led to the growth of cities as people moved from the countryside to work in factories. This led to the development of new social classes and a shift in the balance of power between workers and owners. The Industrial Revolution also had a major impact on the environment and increased the demand for natural resources and the rise of factories led to pollution and other environmental issues. Overall, the Industrial Revolution had a far-reaching and enduring impact on the way we live, work and communicate. It transformed the world from a primarily agricultural society into a more industrialized and urbanized one and laid the foundations for many of the technological and societal changes that we see today. The National Museum of Engineering and Science in Bolton, England showcases one of the largest collections of stationary steam engines in the United Kingdom. The engines on display once powered the textile mills of the north of England. 120 years ago, Lancashire was the largest producer of cotton textiles in the world and had hundreds of mills operating. The mills were powered by steam engines and it's estimated that there were as many as 10,000 engines at work, most of which were built by local engineering companies. However, as production moved overseas, the industry declined and by the late 1960s, only a few hundred mills survived. The National Museum of Engineering and Science was established in 1966 by a group of dedicated enthusiasts. They were concerned about the rapid disappearance of their heritage and wanted to preserve the steam engines from the textile industries of Lancashire and Yorkshire. With the support of the Mason family who owned the Atlas Mills site in Bolton, the society was offered premises where they could begin rebuilding the engine. In 1983, after 15 years of work, the first museum was open to the public. Five of the rebuilt engines were working in steam and the museum was named the Bolton Steam Museum. Over the next seven years, it became a well-known attraction in the area. However, in 1990, the mill complex was sold for redevelopment and the museum was in the way. The new owners, William Morris Supermarkets, were sympathetic to the society's situation and agreed to relocate the museum to another building on the site. In 1991, the society was given a long lease on the new premises and began reassembling its collection, which had grown to 27 engines. The new building, called the Cotton Store, provided an ideal space for the museum with plenty of natural lighting and crane coverage to assist with moving and assembling the heavy engine parts. In 2006, a new boiler house was built and a boiler was installed so that the engines could be demonstrated working in steam on regular steam days. At other times, five of the engines can be shown in motion under electric drive. Despite numerous appeals for grant aid and an application to the National Lottery for funds, the Society's small group of volunteers have been working largely unaided to return the engines to a fully operational condition. The museum relies on donations and goodwill from local companies to fund its development. The National Museum of Engineering and Science showcases the remarkable engineering achievements of the past and is a testament to the dedication and passion of the Society's members who worked tirelessly to preserve their heritage for future generations. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. The Bolton Steam Museum. I've never seen such huge machines before. The machines, well, machines like this made the modern world. And it has uh, something you can't appreciate on video, the, the smell of uh, clean grease and oil. It's, uh, it's a nice smell. Usually when uh, I'm working on a motor or something, it doesn't smell like cre clean grease and oil. <laughs> so I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, come here and check it out. Uh, try and get here on a day when they're steamed up. It's fantastic. 
All right, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you want to help us out with our adventures here, check out our webpage. We got some uh, interesting t-shirts this week.